All right, so this is part two of intro to factoring. What we're going to do is now find the GCF of binomials. And you can see I put it in quotations because what I'm going to give you is not really what we would call a binomial, but it's like a piece of a binomial. It's a little funky. So what we're going to look at is x plus 1 and the binomial x plus 1 squared. So we want to find the GCF between these two things. Now, the parentheses around these two expressions are very important here. They kind of are giving me a, a nice segue into saying this is prime. And what I mean by that is, look at x plus 1. Do we know what x is? No idea. You just gave me x, which could be anything. It's an unknown. And I sure as don't know what x plus 1 is. It's whatever x is plus 1, so that's our best bet. Same deal over here. We have x plus 1, that quantity squared. Sure, we could FOIL it out, but all we do know is we have x plus 1 times x plus 1. That's what it really means. We can kind of almost treat this like we did with variables, where we collect what they share in common. Well, he has an x plus 1. This guy has one of them. Sure, he has another one, but this guy doesn't have it. So the thing that they share in common between these two is x plus 1. And I'm going to stress to you to keep it in parentheses. They're very useful. They're not important here, but they, are very, they make it clear um, on what you mean the GCF is. So I'll get in a good habit of writing your parentheses anyways. Now that feels funky to you. So maybe let me give you a little bit nicer of an example. It won't be with binomials. Let's say I had x and x squared. Do I know what x is? No, no idea. Well, I'm going to call him prime, right? And x squared, I know I have x times x. Well, the only thing they have in common is an x. Well, just change that x there to an x plus 1, and we have the same problem as before. So when we collect binomials, so to speak, and we're using this term loosely because we know this doesn't turn into a binomial, uh, we are collecting the smallest degree of them, just like we did before. So let's see an example where they ask us to factor. And let's get a little ugly. Let's say we have x cubed times x plus 2 plus 3 times x plus 2. Now at first glance, this is beyond hideous to us, because you're like, oh my god, look at all the terms, I gotta distribute stuff out, and I'd say stop, 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 stop. Let's take a step back. Do you notice anything that kind of looks the same? I know my 2 looks a little sad, but it is the same as that 2 over there. We look at it and we see, ah, well maybe you're onto something. There's x plus 2, and there's an x plus 2. They're the same. I mean, what's going on between these things is multiplication. So it's already written as a factor for us. We have something times something else. That's factors. Factor means to write as a product. But now we got a problem. There's a plus sign here. So we need to factor out a GCF. Well, what do these two share in the common? That x plus 2. So this is my GCF between the two. Now when I factor out the GCF, make sure you have those parentheses. Let's find out what times x plus 2 will get us back the very ugly thing we started with. So let's see. And this is much better in person than it is to describe online. So look at x cubed times x plus 2. I'm saying I already have this x plus 2, right? He's done. What's left behind? Well, that x cubed. All right, plus. Now we have what times x plus 2 will get us 3 times x plus 2? We already have that x plus 2. It's done. We have it. What we're missing is the 3. So this is our now our factored form. And you might not believe me, but you know what? Go ahead. Do this on your own. Check it by foiling. And then make sure you're in descending order. Okay? All right. Now this leads us to a very nice method in which we might have issues with factoring things that have four terms, so to speak. And let's, we'll start off with a nice example. Let's say we got asked to factor 20x cubed minus 15x squared plus 8x minus 6. Now when we first look at this guy, 
we're going to see if there's a GCF. So let's see, we got 20, 15, 8, and 6. Let's go ahead and start with the smallest number. 6 has 2 and 3. So let's see, can 2 go into everybody? 2, nope, 2 can't go into 15, no good. How about 3? No, 3 can't go into 8 and can't go into 20. And 6 can't go into everybody, so we're really out of luck. Okay, so between the constants, the GCF is 1. Now let's look at the variables. We have cubed, squared, to the first, and none. Well, we always take the smallest degree, none. So unfortunately, our GCF here is 1, which is boring to us. Now, you might be saying, well, okay, we can't factor it. I'd say, no, we didn't give it a fair shot. So we have one of the many requirements that requ for factoring by grouping. We have to have the GCF is 1, and we also have to have four terms which coincidentally we have one two three four all right what to, you know harm am i going to perform on you now well once we have the four terms and our gcf is one between all four terms what we're going to do is group up what we can factor out a gcf between like these first two look at them they're so tempting you have 20x cubed minus 15x squared it's like screaming, oh, look at that x squared. I can factor you out. And between 20 and 15, we have a 5. So what we're going to do is factor out the GCF between the first two guys, which is 5x squared. And then left behind, we have 4x minus 3. All right, and now go to the last two guys. And they may be not as tempting as the first two, but definitely are jumping out saying, hey, look, we both share a 2 in common. Well, we got a plus sign, so be careful. Let's factor out a 2. 2 times what gets us 8? Well, 4x. And 2 times what gets us negative 6? Well, minus 3. Oh, look at this. My goodness. We have 4x minus 3 and 4x minus 3. And you know I planned this to come out that way to begin with, but this is the beauty of factor by grouping. We have four terms, and at first the GCF is 1 between all four of them, but then we said, well, maybe if we, you know, split it up, group two together and group another two together, see what happens. And look, we have a GCF popping out between the two terms. So now we'll factor out that new GCF, which is 4x minus 3. And then left behind is the stuff in the front. So we have the 5x squared plus 2. And now we factored, whoa, that looked out bad. Uh, we factored the polynomial. And if you were to FOIL this again, FOIL this entire thing out, you will end up back with what we started with. Go ahead and FOIL it. It'll be fine. All right, so we need to recap those steps. I verbalize a lot of them. So let's have it in written words in front of us. So here's our factor by grouping. The first thing we need is four terms and the GCF is one between all four. The next thing we need to do is group first two terms together and last two terms together. From there, once we've grouped them, looking them together, we factor out a GCF between the two groups. Our last step is to factor out a new binomial GCF that will appear. And if you're very a little bit sad from all this, you can run far away and cry because you'll be done after the step number four. So let's go ahead and do one following those steps. And I'm sorry, you could go back and pause it so that you can write those down if you need to. So our first one, and actually last one we're gonna cover in this video, is to factor 2z cubed plus 2z squared plus 3z plus 3. And these factor by groupings tend to be nice. You can kind of see they're almost tempting you to group them up. Like see, you see the two twos and the two threes. It's like, oh, I want to group those guys together. But let's make sure we meet the requirements. So number one, we need four terms. All right, check. Next thing, we need a GCF of 1. Let's see, we got z cubed, z squared, z, no z's. Okay, no variables. We're in the clear there. 
two, two, three, three. Well, three can't go into two and two can't go into three. So all that they have in common is one. Excellent. So the first criteria is met. Next step, we're going to group them. Group the first two together and the last two together. I recommend always doing the first two, last two. It actually doesn't really make a difference if you want to group them slightly differently. You can jumble it up a lot um, and still factor by grouping fairly nicely. So we've got the first two to group together and the last two. Now our third step is to find the GCF between the two separate groups. So between the first two well, we got a two for sure. That one should be screaming at you. And then the smallest degree is z squared. And I'm sorry, my twos and z's look the same. Just remember the lines for the z. Now, what times two z squared will get us two z cubed? Well, we already got the two. We have z squared, we need three, so one more. Plus, all right, what times two z squared will get us two z squared? Well, one. Okay, move on to the next guy. We got plus and the three screaming out at us and we have the plus one. And there's where the magic is. And you can start patting yourself on the back because you're like, man, I must have done this right. There's no way I could screw up and still end up with the same binomial. And you'd be right. It's very difficult to do that. So we'll factor out this new GCF, which is our final and fourth step, that Z plus one. And left behind is the stuff in the front of the z plus 1. So we have 2z squared plus 3. And we are done. So that is how we factor by grouping. And that's it for chapter 13.1 section.